Your next bout is three five minute rounds in the bantamweight division. Let's introduce your first warrior. Playing out of the blue corner. This man's a mixed martial artist with a professional record of five wins and only one loss. He stands 170 centimeters tall and weighs already 61.2 kilograms. Representing Team Lakai and fighting out of the Philippines. Give it up for Jeremy Pacatu. And introducing his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. This man's a mixed martial artist with a professional record of six wins and three losses. He stands 165.1 centimeters tall and weighs a ready 61.6 kilograms. Representing Team Relentless and fighting out of Mumbai, India. Give it up for Shantanya. Dangerous Gavali! Your referee is Scott Manhart. And here he is, Scott Manhart will be your referee for this one. Pakatu and Gavali. This is going to be a battle, and you better believe the crowd is going to be firmly behind Chaitanya. <laughs> Round one is underway. Cyrus feeds alongside Parvin Davas. So this is the second time he's uh, fighting in front of his home crowd, Mumbai. Definitely adds a little bit of pressure, but kind of gives you that support as well. Kind of, of a course. good and oh. a bad to it. Oh, and he quickly swarmed back into it. Chaitanya has a very good uh, ground game as well. Usually we see Indian fighters, uh, uh, their ground game is not so strong, but Chaitanya's is uh, very strong. Uh, I think he's a purple belt in jiu-jitsu, uh, correct me. I mean. Uh, uh, as far as I know, yeah. Well, he's instantly going yeah. after the ground game, brings Pakachu to the ground. Much to the delight of the crowd here at the Dome. And he is now in half guard, and we'll see where he goes from here, if he's gonna look to move into a submission or to get a little ground and pound. Tough, tough Indian fighter, Satanya. This would only add to his accolades, getting a win here at Brave Combat Federation. Still very young in his career as well, really just hitting his fighting prime. Yeah, he's been fighting uh, six years now, I think. Well, he looks like a veteran as he swarmed and he closed distance very, very quickly. You talked about coming out of that gym evolution and. There's a lot of great fighters coming out of that gym. Seems to be kind of a hotbed here in India. Yeah, so we have, apart from uh, Chaitanya, we have uh, Mohammed Farad and Abdul Munir also. Well, uh, yeah, we obviously saw today's. what Farhad did, and then Munir, talk about that fight, man. You talk about some electricity, some hype. Mangat Munir is going to be a crazy fight. It is, and I think everyone is, uh, uh, amongst all these fights, waiting for that. It's the first time there's been a very strong rivalry in uh, Indian MMA, and the, uh, he's able to take him down again. The strength, it's the strength, the positioning, and the technique of Gavali as he brings him down to the ground. Now he's gonna throw a few ground and pound left hands on Pakatu. Jeremy Pakatu, was, he got all the way back up to his feet, but was quickly brought back down to the ground. Great determination, he oh, he oh. might have it locked in. Scott Manhart's watching very closely. He's got that Darce choke in. Can he finish it? Doesn't look like he's going to get out of that one. Let's see. Oh, that looks real tight, Parvin. Oh. Oh, oh no, and he's wow, he's he's he out. survives it. Incredible will and determination by Jeremy Pakatu to get out of that very dangerous situation. If, you can, if I can just add a little local flavor, in Hindi would say, <laughs> So for all of those uh, uh, following uh, in, in uh, Hindi who want a little Hindi, so that okay. was a little local flavor for All them. right, okay, yeah. all right. You can see just continuing to work on that neck and just smothering so Tanya Gavali. But give it up for Pakatu, nice. man. Yep. He, he back managed to, his to get feet. up. Oh, oh, and a big oh. left hand. And he may have dropped Gavali. 
the Gavali quickly recovers. That is one thing about Pacatu is he does not go away. A gritty fighter that will not throw in the towel. Audience getting firmly behind Chitanya. They are chanting his name inside the dome. See Chaitanya now inside the guard. Jeremy Pacatu really showing some signs of life just when you think he may have been out of it. He almost had to give in to the darts, but he survived. Now almost looked for an arm bar, but Pacatu's back to his feet, and he wants to get a takedown of his own. I'm impressed here by the drive of Pacatu. Yep. So he might be better off keeping it standing. Yeah, he definitely given up a bit of strength. Shaitanya, but at the same time, they're going to reward him with a takedown there, 100%. But he's going to go right into a leg lock. Going to be tough to get for Cavalli. What a battle between these two. Philippines and India. Leaving it all on the mat. And that's where it's going to end. Entertaining round. Yep. Huh? Very impressive work from both men. They had some highlights. And Gavali, it seemed like he was in the driver's seat. Like he was going to close it out. He was going to get the finish. But Pakatu wouldn't go away. Showed us a little bit of that striking. And he almost finished the fight himself. Yeah, he did. Uh, uh, we really bounced back from that. Well, that, that's the point I was trying to give. We heard it before a big shot. Last night took an L, but tonight I bounced back. Very, yeah. very popular song. I'm sure it's popular here, too. Yeah, it is. Right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, a lot of popular songs. <laughs> Let's take a look at the replay. And Gavali was dominant. You saw the strength. You saw the wrestling. And a beautiful throw, beautiful technique for Sertanya. Well, Cyrus, have you managed to... Uh, uh, travel around in Mumbai a bit? I day. wish. I absolutely wish I could have. I got here the night before the weigh-in, and, and I leave tonight directly after the fight to go back to the States. I'm very disappointed that I didn't get more time in Mumbai. I really wanted to see some things and well, just didn't have the time. time. Yeah, well, hopefully we'll be back very, very soon. What's been your impression of uh, Brave Combat Federation, their whole operation, how they're running things? I think it's uh, a global... Uh, organization a very very high class event one of the best events that mumbai and even india has seen uh, exactly. so far premier organization and uh, i think this if you see the crowd it's been a big big success and uh, mumbai and india is certainly going to want more from brave oh i think so too and i and i think we could definitely give it to them round number two is underway package in the red shaitanya Cavalli in the black We'll see if he goes right back to the well and tries to take him down. Pakitu kind of got a little momentum at the end of round number one, executing his own takedown. Both men taking their time, both very, very, have a ton of energy, a ton of gas in the tank for both of them. I, I did manage to speak to Chaitanya before the fight, uh, just as his opponent changed, and he wasn't too perturbed by his uh, opponent uh, uh, changing, which is, of course, always a good thing. He said he was going to stick to his game plan, uh, and uh, he hadn't worked too much on uh, uh, a strategy around his opponent. Sure. Gavali is stalking, oh! and he went for a big flying knee, and he is to the mat. Gavali's Gav going to make a pay. seemed to guess that and time it pretty well. Very, very well executed the defense by Chaitanya, and now he is in half guard. It's a very, very tough place to be, but as you can see, he keeps the legs moving, stays very busy on the ground, does pack it to, and he's gonna look to scramble and get back to his feet. But he's up against the cage. Locking up that leg, could do a little bit better job of locking up that leg, trying to isolate the arm as Satanya. It's a good spot for an elbow if Cavalli can raise it up there and rain it down. So 
going to try and ring some ground and pound down on Pakatau. Pakatau, if he can get up there, he could possibly wall walk and get back to his feet. He's been very, very good to scramble. But I'll tell you, those ground and pound shots are not going to feel good. Some nice right hands from Saitanya. Here comes Pakatau. Wow. Just like that. Great reversal. These men are going for fight of the night, as you can see, leaving it all inside the cage, Pakatu and Cavalli. Great determination, great drive by Jeremy Pakatu, and he's oh, going to take back. his back. Oh, no, just nearly. Cavalli almost baiting him in, and now back in a dominant position is the Indian fighter. So obviously, now that we've seen Farha, now we're seeing Gavali. You got to be excited about seeing Abdul Munir. He's very, very psyched to be in this position and to get this big opportunity with Brave. Well, that is a fight I'm definitely waiting to see. And they asked me to comment two fights, and I said, apart from this one, that I, is the I one. I had a feeling they <laughs> were going to be back about. for that one. Well, you I know, don't blame me a bit. We had them on our. We, we run a, a show called the MMA India Show, and we had them for the first time face off on that. It wasn't pleasant, and oh, it seems like Jeremy is going to. Is he, is he going to manage to finish it off? Wow, Gavali is in a bad spot. He's going to have to stay busy. He's just covering up. Can Jeremy Pakatu get a win There's here? There's still a lot of time left on the clock. Wow, Pakatu is putting him in a bad predicament. Wow. Eating some serious punches but he's, is uh, Cavalli, but now he's going to try to isolate that arm. He's collecting himself. Scott Manhart was getting very, very close to stepping in on the fight. Great awareness by Pakistan. Now he has the back, and he has both hooks in. Is Can he going to finish it? Out? Tough to see from this vantage point where he is with the choke. He's going to try to get under that chin, going to try to knife his way in. Still not under. It's still on the face. Not under the chin yet. Oh, and he oh, is getting under that chin. Pakatu with both hooks in. He's got his ankles crossed, though. That is not a good place to be. One after another for Pakatu. He's not only going for the choke, he is throwing some great punches. And it doesn't look like he's going to be able to put him away. No, he's not. He's not. Not enough time after the clock. And that's the end wow. Of the round. That's a big round for Jeremy Pakatu. And I think that flurry, the way he finished up, that may have given him that round in the eyes of the judges. Definitely, he's going to come into the third round with a lot of confidence because of the end. 100%. Talk to us a little bit about MMA India. You know, I saw that we're now we're friends on the social media. We're following each other now. Talk about kind of how that's changed the game and how you guys are covering the sport. Uh, we are one of India's first uh, talk shows, and we uh, really took off. We didn't know the extent of the, the following Indian MMA has, but it has a huge following. UFC, of course, comes uh, uh, live here, and we are very lucky to have Brave as an actual live event here. Uh, we have another promotion. Uh, which has has a good following, but Brave is the first really global promotion to make its way to India. We have a lot of local promotions. There is a lot of interest in MMA now. One of the biggest films in India called Sultan with the superstar Salman Khan. Okay. Featured MMA. Uh, one of the, the problems, I wouldn't say problems, but uh, one of the ways of spreading it, I think, would be to give MMA an Indian name as well. Yeah. See the replay right there. Jeremy Pakatu nearly put Gavali away. And we are going to go right back to the fight. It's the third and final round between these two. The show of respect. Gavali and Pakatu. And Pakatu, you're right. That newfound confidence, he seems to have the momentum in this one. But Gavali seems to have recovered. Look at the build on Gavali, man. You take a look at the difference between the two, and Gavali almost looks like a toy, like an action figure with that build. Got a ton of power. 
much, much bigger than Jeremy. But he has to put it to good use. He can't have all those muscles. If he can't use them, he can't throw those big shots. And we want to see Cavalli. If he can throw some heavy leather at Jeremy Pacatu. Oh. Nice combination. Pacatu dialed in. That hit him flush. Are you sure it's not Pacquiao? Or is it Pacatu? Could be Pacquiao. Pacquiao? Could I be don't a think descendant. So. I don't think so. <laughs> Maybe channeling a little Pac-Man there. An inside leg kick for Pacatu. Cavalli taking his time here. You better believe he's going to want to try to bring this thing back down to the ground where he can grind. And he yep. teases the takedown, but Pacatu gets out of there with the quickness. And he is on his bicycle here. Jeremy seems to trot. have a lot of uh, gas in the tank for the last round. He is going to circle. He is trying to frustrate Chaitanya. Very, very light on his feet here. Jeremy Pacatu. If he steps in with that combination, could be trouble for Chaitanya. He hasn't had much of a response for those for those combos. He doesn't. Uh, Chaitanya is uh, very strong uh, on the ground. He's been working on his uh, stand-up game. It's certainly an evolution. Stepping forward here. Chaitanya just kind of unwilling to really pull the trigger and go after it right now. He's waiting on Pacatu, and I don't know if that's a good idea or not. Pacatu kind of maintaining control of the cage. If I can uh, translate a bit what uh, Chaitanya's corner is telling him because they're speaking in Hindi. Yes, please do. They were telling him to keep the distance and now and then when uh, Jeremy was circling in. It's going to be very important, though, for Cavalli to implement some offense of his own. He can't stay on the defense. Hakatu is just racking up his score here. Inside leg kicks, putting together strikes. Two minutes left here in our third and final round. Nice little battle between Philippines and India. Of course, I know Team Evolution would love to have a clean sweep here tonight. They already have Farhad on the board. Can they pick up another victory? Kafali needs to get busy. If this goes to the judges, it's going to be tough. Yeah, it could be very, very close. Looking for a big combination. Nice takedown defense, and he's going to chase him down. And Pacatu gets out of there. Good strategy for Pacatu, not staying there too long. It's working for him. Titania needs to set up that takedown with a few strikes. Not quite telegraph it, as he did right there. And Pacatu gets out of the way. But Pacatu, he doesn't want to be backing up the entire fight, though. And I don't think he will. Outside leg kick. Having a hard time tracking the very busy Jeremy Pacatu. I think at this point, Chitanya realizes he's uh, got to get some more points on the board in the second round with Jeremy's. Closes the distance. Can he execute the takedown? And he does. Let's see, there's about 30 seconds on the clock. Let's see what he can do with them. That's a great move, great strategy for Titania. Can he do enough in the eyes of the judges? We got 10 seconds left in this one. And Titania is going to end up on he got top. Up. He got some very strong elbows in. And there it is, your third and final round is over. That means we're going to leave it in the hands of the judges. We'll be back with our official decision here in Mumbai. And welcome back to Mumbai Brave 5. And let's take a look at the replay from this battle. We saw the striking of Jeremy Pacatu, and he looked very good when it came to the stand-up fighting.
He did, and uh, he tried very hard not to let Chitanya take him down, and uh, a lot of times, especially in the third round, we saw he succeeded in that. Yeah, he did a great job of getting out of there, but I think round number two is really where the tide turned, and he nearly finished the fight, and it just seemed like he carried that momentum through the rest of the fight. Yeah, in the end, Chitanya was able to take him down, but a little too less too late. Yeah, you're absolutely right. A little too little too late for Chaitanya Cavalli. That being said, it's all up to the judges. We have our official decision. We'll go to Carlos Kramer. All right, ladies and gentlemen, what a war that was. Give it up for both of these warriors. And we go to the judges' scorecard. The first judge scores about 29, 28, pack and two. Judge number two scores about 30, 29, Gavali. And your third judge scores about 29, 28 for your winner by split decision, Jeremy Pacato. Bantamweight division. Let's meet our first one. Fighting out of the blue corner. This young man is a mixed martial artist with a professional record of three wins and two losses. He stands 1.65 meters tall and weighs already 61 to a two kilograms. Fighting out of Curitiba, Brazil and representing Striker House. Put your hands together for Tiago Coleta. And let's meet his opponent. Fighting out of the red corner. This young man is an martial artist with a professional record of two wins and one loss. He stands 1.70 meters tall and weighs already 61.2 kilos. Fighting out of Baguio City in the Philippines, representing Team Lakai. Put your hands together for Jeremy Pacatu. Your referee is Fernando Partella. Fernando Partella is going to be your referee, and it's time to go to battle in the bantamweight division as it is Pacatu and De La Coleta. It is Brazil taking on the Philippines. De La Coleta will be in the black with the white trim, in the red, Jeremy Pacatu. Pacatu seems very comfortable. It looks like he's about to have some fun. Of course, he just came off that win, Pacatu. Uh, that was at Brave in India, where he got the win over Chaitanya Gavali. That was a big win for him. He was taking, uh, taking a beating a little bit in some parts of that fight. Like I said before, just a ton of heart, man. From the home of Manny Pacquiao. Nice overhand. Let it return quickly. Ooh, and a nice combination by Pacquiao. Take a look at those hands. Nice and short, too. How quick are those hands? And accurate as well. Pacatu growing before our eyes. Already turning the face of Dela Coletta Red. The Bantamweight's giving us a little slugfest here. Dela Coletta wants to bring him to the ground. And that's not a good place for Pacatu. He wants to keep this fight standing, Frankie. I'll tell you what, Packetu's come throwing punches at some, some really different angles. I like it. Great accuracy, great power, but De La Coletta does a great job of neutralizing, pushing him up against the fence, and at some points attempting to take him to the ground. But Packetu, I mean, literally, since Brave number two has grown before our eyes, continues to get better. Yeah, 20 years old, 21, whatever he is, it's, it's hard not to get better each time out. Great head movement by Pacatu. He doesn't want to stay in that striking range too long. The bantamweight showing us a little power. Pacatu doing a good job of staying poised there, but again, needs to get his back off that fence. Brave Combat Federation has put the Team Lakai team from Philippines on the map here, giving them a, a number of opportunities 
at least four or five Team Lakai fighters have fought here on Brave Combat Federation, and that's because they always deliver. Double head kick. What a scrap. Great defense by Pacatu stepping to the side. And now he's going to try to take the back of De La Coletta. Wow, he snuck that leg in, get that outside hook. So nice, has his hand on, on his shoulder. Let's even get, get to the choke here. De La Coletta is going to try to shake him off, but he's trying to flatten him out right now. Is Pacatu. It is tough to tell if he's underneath the chin, a bad angle. Oh, wow. De La Coletta is trying to fight through it. Could Jeremy Pacatu? Oh, he's under there tight. There's no way he's going to survive this one. With everything he has, can he get his second choke of his career, Jeremy Pacatu? Oh, it looks like he's almost out there. Daley Coletta. Coletta did a good job controlling the hands. He's got to fight those hands. Talk about being able to survive, Frankie, when you're in the choke for so long. What do you do and what are the intricacies you to survive? Your neck. You, you want to attack the hands on your neck. That's first and foremost. And you want to get your back to the mat. But Pacatu is doing a good job of keeping him belly up. And staying glued to his and he, back. And he has to give it up. He has to give up the choke. How about that? He still has the body lock, it's though. Not over yet. Not over yet. That body lock is keeping making it hard for Fletcher. A dominant round here by Pacatu. Really showing us something here. Continuing to attack the neck as Jeremy Pacatu wanted to get that choke. I think it would be ideal if he can get Coletta to his choking side, to the bottom side. Then that's much harder to escape. Bantamweight action here, not much time left. Final seconds here of round number one. A very, very eventful round one. Looks like he's almost under the chin again, but has he's to give it up. Resiliency, Coletta. That body training is tough to deal with. And it looks like Dela Coletta is going to survive the round, but Jeremy Pacatu gave him everything he could handle. Has to be frustrating for Pacatu, and he probably wore out his arms quite a bit yeah. trying to finish that choke. He did, but you know what's good is he had that body triangle. That body triangle really controlled, so he didn't have to squeeze so much with his arms. But yeah, you go for chokes like that, you don't get them, you definitely bring some lack of, that, lack of acid to the arm. I was impressed with Pacatu. Mixed up on his feet, took the back, he's going for the kill in here. Yeah, it really surprised me when he jumped on the back, because he was looking really good from the stand up. It seemed like he had the advantage. But, uh, but he went for the kill and he wanted to get the finish. Yeah, it was very slick. You know, he used his length to take the back there and that was impressive. Brave Eight here live from Curitiba, Brazil. We can see it in over 60 countries, the fastest growing MMA promotion on the planet. This is what you get when you come to a Brave event. When Brave comes to your town, it's nonstop action. And these bantamweights are gonna go into round number two, and if it's anything like round one, hold on to your safety belt. Yeah. Round two underway, Pacatu and De La Coletta. Can De La Coletta use that momentum being able to survive? Great movement by Pacatu. But sticking right with him is Coletta. You've got to try to stay in the center of the cage, not get back to the fence. That's Coletta's best bet. Every time he picks Packett out to the, to the fence, he slows him down. Nice left hand by De La Coletta. Great movement by Packett, too. Oh, shot of his own. Oh, had the guilt. He kind of went. I kind of feel like Packett was respecting a little too much, and he backed off. De La Coletta did a great job on the takedown of fence and now has him up against the fence. Oh. 
Of course, De La Coletta out of the three wins, two of those have come by way of submission. So he's a fighter that likes to get it done on the ground. And he desperately trying to connect those hands. But Pakatu once again almost getting the back. This guy is pretty good with that. That's right, be careful sometimes going for the single. There he goes again. There. Take a look at that. Pakatu is on his back again, Frankie. That's why it's better to go for the double in that position. When you go for that head outside single, you're giving up an angle that he can get back. That's exactly what Pakatu did. Seem to get to, oh, he's got the body triangle. Does he have the body triangle? Uh, it's, it's hard to tell from this position. He doesn't have it completely. He's kind of on his side. I wouldn't say he has quite the back. If he could somehow get around that back, Package is going to be in another great position, and it's going to be an eternity for De La Coletta to have to wait. He's up a little bit high. Coming out the back, Coletta's coming out the back. So he can get top position. Looks like Package well, might have tried to grab that arm. Taylor Coletta, though, has done a great job of staying in the fight, not going away, hanging in there, and that's what you have to do sometimes, just kind of weather the storm. Yeah, he's in some sticky situations and uh, made the right call to not get put away. He's still in the fight. The bantamweight showing us something here in Brazil. We have a lot of light heavyweight action, a lot of welterweight action on this car, but the bantamweight's trying to steal the show. I think uh, he's going to be a little reluctant going to take that. He's given his backup twice. And here we go. Letter looks to be slowing down a little bit. See if Pakatu goes to the bread and butter, see if he tries to stick those hands again. Letter's kind of just walking in, and he's kind of using some things a little bit more movement. Nice Pack combination. I'd like to see Package who maybe go to the body to set up yeah, the hooks. Yeah, headshots right now. A little bit of blood there on the, to the left of the eye, to the left eye of uh, De La Coletta. Pactow using good movement, just can't put himself back against that fence. That's your play, going to look to take him. Of course, we know, you know, the national hero in the Philippines is Manny Pacquiao, you know. Having a guy like that that really does appreciate the sport of MMA, really loves the sport of MMA. Just think if he would have ever mixed it up. You know, I think he would have been a guy that really would have taken to the sport. Yeah, his speed and angles, and he brought that to MMA. With, uh, wow. Maybe some tie boxing, I'm sure that would be fun to see. And I fought in the Philippines, and uh, the fight culture there is very, very big. <laughs> Walking him down as De La Coletta just trying to get that momentum, trying to get the big mo, but Pacadu's done a great job of neutralizing any sort of offense that De La Coletta's thrown. He's coming inside. Let's see if he ends up going high with that. It's a nice trick. You go inside, low. Ooh, that was a cup shot right there. I guess they're going to keep it rolling. Oh, but not now. Okay. Oh, that's a fight. That's and a fight. it looks like a, a body shot. Was it a body shot or was it the... Uh, Surely not the low blow, but all right, we're going to Carlos Kramer. Time for the official decision, folks. All right, ladies and gentlemen, what a great fight that was. Give it up for both of these warriors. We have a stoppage. Referee Fernando Portella calls a stop to this bout at four minutes and 35 seconds of the second round. TKO due to strikes for your winner from the Philippines, Jeremy Pacato. Your first warrior, fighting out of the blue corner. This man's a mixed martial artist with a professional record of six wins and one loss. He stands 168 centimeters tall and weighs already 61.2 kilograms. Representing Boss Conquer MMA and fighting out of the Philippines. Give it up for Ruthless Mark And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner, 
This man is a mixed martial artist with a professional record of eight wins and three losses. He stands 172 centimeters tall and weighs already 63.7 kilograms. Representing Team Lakai and fighting out of Baguio City, the Philippines. Give it up for the juggernaut, Jeremy Pacatu. Your referee is Tomas Bronde. Phil, this is mixed martial arts. This is inherently a dangerous sport. I'd like to thank our medical partner, the Medical City, for keeping all of our great fighters safe. The fighter safety is paramount right here. I bring up the Fight. Thomas Brona gets us underway. Start of round one. level of professional mixed martial arts is incredibly impressive Karen. It is incredibly impressive and he is a Filipino fighter. Times and go high, Kirik. I do indeed. Oh, big overhand. Mark Alcuda just letting Jeremy Pagatun know that he's dangerous in this fight. Jeremy Pagatun to Abir. To his real customer. He's really crashing that inside leg kick, isn't he? the southpaw fighter Mark Alcoba to really take the pop out of the lead leg which then begins to affect things like your ability to strike, your ability to take somebody down because so much of mixed martial arts is predicated off your lead leg. Part of the training in Ushu is turning those shins into cricket bat or if you prefer a baseball bat. Staying in front of Mark Alcuba for too long. The take down is the Royal of the Gulf runs inside control. Absolutely fantastic to see a takedown and a guard pass attempt at the same time. Ended up in top half guard, but not close guard. Beautiful technique from the juggernaut. Just steps right over. Fair play to Mark Alcuba. He's trying to follow the hips as best he can, but Jeremy Pockets, who settles into half guard. Let's see what he can do from here. That guard is passed now. Looks to step out ahead and perhaps to set up a Kimura. I love these Filipino fighters striking from bottom. Just being warned not to hit the back of the head. Brave Nation, there's an area about the side of a cell phone that runs from the top of your head down your spine that cannot be struck. I think that was intelligent work from Jeremy Pagan too. He, he intentionally turned his head away to expose the back of his head so that any strike would land in the back. So a little bit of veteran savvy from the 22 year old. Deep veteran savvy from the 22 year old and he knew the punch coming from the bottom wasn't gonna be enough to jangle him. Great use of jangle by the way, Genuinely fantastic. Are you trying to set up the two guys we've alluded to or perhaps, or perhaps a leg lock. We've already had one knee ball tonight. We have. I would not be shocked if he goes on the leg. He's nope. Hard. He's going for the arc. He's going for the head scissor. He's going for the head scissor. He's taking the head scissor. He's looking to put his opponent down in the legs. Has he got enough in his legs? And if he does not get the leg scissor, he also has the arc. The fighter is out and down on his back again. What a scramble. That has to be so demoralizing. When you feel like you, you've got enough space to get out, and you see the tiniest bit of daylight. But Jeremy Packett, who played the role of the darkness right there, and just blanketed Mark Alcoba. And Packett, too, is right back on the job, trying to set up the next submission attempt. 
could be the arm, could be another head scissor. He might even go diving for that leg. I like the slow, methodical pressure that he's using. He's not just, he's, he's taking position before submission. He's not just diving on a submission, perhaps getting up his position. Very intelligent mixed martial arts. He just transitions with the hips. I can say honestly, yeah, he'll belly. Yeah, and melt. He may take it off the arm bar. A head on triangle, perhaps. Transition to the back. The Heavy on the hips now. This could be it. Heavy shots coming down. We'll be trying to do the right thing just by grabbing a hold of Jeremy Pakatu. Jeremy Pakatu, beautiful base off elbow. And again, and another one. Just uses the hand to bring against the head. Blast that elbow in. Big finish for Jeremy Pakatu in the first round. Those elbows can cause fight ending cuts in split seconds. Split seconds. End of round one. What? A ground fill. That was absolutely fantastic. We've seen Jeremy Pakatu going in there, fighting in front of his country men and women. He's so calm, so chilled out. He's in and just his works to the leg. Tries to miss, works to a beautiful double leg take down. Flares the legs and lands in the lands and sides. They train so hard in Team Lakai that fighting in the cage is easy. see the, the head scissor that Jeremy Pakatu was attempting, but all the while he maintained control. There's Mark Alcoba thinking, yep, that's it, I'm stood up, and straight away Jeremy Pakatu puts him back down, finishes the round so strong, takes the back, great vines, and lands some heavy ground and pound from the back. Very dominant round from Jeremy Pakatu. I think his coaches in the corner are going to be saying to him, Jeremy, give us more of the same there. That would be... My advice, word for word, son, do it again. <laughs> Gage door locked. Ready, ready, fight. Round two. Touch your hand. Round two starts. Jeremy Packetu goes to side control and then mount if he's content to stay in north-south and try and pick an arm. It looks like he may be trying to take an arm home with him, throw some elbows along the way. Got to be careful with those knees near the back of the head. Thought about it momentarily. Intelligently decided not to. Right back in the side control, showing just how dominant a grand specialist he is. Gives up the back, both hooks in. Here comes the hip pressure. Yes. Here comes that hip pressure. Beautiful flattening out by Jeremy Pakatu. Second hook is in. Submission attempt may not be far away. Packetu's looking a little high. He's got 
confidence in his, he's got big confidence in his hips. Big confidence in his position. The Out the back door, looking for the arm. But what relentless wrestling from Terry Blackerton. Grabs the leg, straight back into the position. Alcoba has got to be heartbroken at this point. Just bench presses Jeremy Pacquiao off. Here comes the arm and attempt. Front head looking for the back. Alcoba still in this fight. Oh, 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 a little bit of trying to take a little bit careless trying to take the back there. But again, in on that single from on his back. Got the single way. Wrestle, young man, wrestle. Let no one say that Team Lakai fighters are only strikers. This is beautiful wrestling we're seeing. Some of this great ground control might be attributable to the amount of time between who gets in with our bunch of each other. We will see later tonight, Stephen Lowe, himself a fantastic ground specialist. Neil Belly here. Alcoba well, continues to turn that way. He may give up the back. It seems that Jeremy Pacquiao has an answer to every question that Alcoba is asking of It does, but Alcoba is still showing admirable, admirable strength. Pacquiao has an answer for everything Mark does. He is still in this fight. This is mixed martial arts. Things can turn around in a second. Brave Nation, if you're seeing excellent refereeing as usual, you are not allowed to put your toes into the fence. You can put your foot against the fence, but you can't stick your toes into it. Ladies and gentlemen of the Brave Nation, if you are enjoying this fight as much as myself and Carrick Janice, use the hashtag BraveCF22 on all social media platforms. Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Let us know if you're enjoying the fights. Let us know what you think's going on. Join the conversation. Be part of the Brave Nation. Dominant position of finishing off the line here from Jeremy Pacatu. End of round two. of the action. Switch head kick from Jeremy Pacatu showing that he does have a diverse arsenal, an array of mixed martial arts attacks. Goes straight in, realizes that he wasn't in on the double leg, transitions straight away to the single leg. And we just see the repertoire of ground skills that Jeremy Pacatu has here. Looked like he was looked like he was in a less than favorable position, but then off his back, switches the hips, grabs the single leg and just charges with it. What do you think Mark Alcoba's corner will be saying to him in between rounds going into the video? What they're going to be doing is trying to make sure his spirit stays strong. This uh -huh. is mixed martial arts. You can turn around a fight at any point, but you can't do it if your heart is broken, if your will is broken. So they're going to speak to him. They're going to talk about one thing he did right, one thing he did wrong, trying to get him to avoid the wrong one, stick with the right one. Start of round three. Leading into the third and final round. It's fair to say that Mark Alcoba will need a finish if he is to salvage anything like this fight. That's that single again from Jeremy Pacquiao. Looks for the red yeah. bubble. Yeah. Yeah. Side control from Jeremy Pacquiao. I want to say quickly, Mark is a terrific fighter. You are not seeing a bad fighter here. You're seeing a terrific fighter. But Jeremy Packett, too, has achieved so much international competition through Brave Combat Federation that right now I don't think he can be beat. I think it's an illustration of just how good Jeremy Packett is that he's able to do this to somebody like Mark Alcoba. Work with it being up just a little bit from Jeremy Pacatu. I'm getting the feeling that he might want to finish this one. I do believe he would like to give his legions of fans here. Absolutely. He would like to give them a finish. I'd like to see him land that double landing earlier. Many 
shooting it twice straight down the center. That was beautiful. He may be throwing these looping shots as a, as a diversion to set that one up. Yeah. 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 I really would like to see Mark Trump escape this mount. At this point, without a shrimp, without hips, without a body lock, without a backdoor escape, with just turning over it. He's giving, he's giving up the back. It's, uh, again, it's like you need to uh, in, in fights. It's, it's kind of a pick the face. It is, and now there's a figure four in the body. Every time he exhales in that body triangle, it gets a little bit tighter. This, this miserable situation just got even more miserable, and he's still trying to strike. I love this fighter. As you said, the intention of the strikes and these strikes aren't one out strikes, but what they may do is change the head position of one out movement. Getting to the back to perhaps a little bit of space to sneak in. And let no one ever doubt the will and the strength and the heart of Mount Mark Alcoba. He is still in this fight 100%. Something to change, a switch or something. There it is, that arm set up. Was denied. Mark now finds himself on. No! It's oh, going to be passed away! Wow! Jeremy Pakitu with the biggest win of his career in the Philippines, in front of his countrymen, with a devastating arm bar. What an illustration of dominance from the one, the only, Jeremy the Juggernaut Pakatsu. Once again, Team Lakai showing they can do everything. Let's get a quick look at that finish one more time. Transitions from the back, bides his time. Hits the arm bar. Beautiful work from Jeremy Pakatu. Just extends the hips, and it was on straight away. We can see that elicits the tap almost instantly. Fantastic work from Jeremy Pakatu. All right, ladies and gentlemen, give it up in this epic battle of two great Filipino warriors. This bout comes to an end at three minutes and six seconds of the third round. Your winner by armbar, the juggernaut, Jeremy Pacato. watching around the world don't blink on this next exciting bout this is three five minute rounds in a catchweight war introducing your first warrior fighting out of the blue corner this man the mixed martial artist with a professional record of nine wins and four losses he stands 172 centimeters tall and weighs already 63.6 .6 kilograms representing team lakai and fighting out of baguio city 
in the Philippines. Give it up for Jeremy the Juggernaut Pacatu. With a professional record of 13 wins and five losses, he stands 170 centimeters tall and weighs already 63.5 kilograms. Representing Shooting Box Diego Lima and fighting out of Sao Paulo, Brazil. Give it up for Felipe. Your referee is Decky the Bandit Larkin. Quiet moments right before the fight begins. Decky Larkin letting both fighters know that they are entering bandit country. And here we go. Hand touch, sign of respect. Now there's no love in these gloves. Both these men have incredible kicking arsenals. Jeremy Pagatu, of course, that Team Lakai Wushu Sanda style mixes together the kicks beautifully with the wrestling. And Felipe Efrien, as dangerous a striker as you will see, as dangerous a finisher as you will see in the bottom weight division. Beautiful exchange from both men. Uppercuts, a hook combination from Jeremy Pagatu. They get stung with a straight overhand from Efrien. Felipe Efrien seems to be finding his distance. Carrick landing big shots on Felipe Efrien. Phil, some of these shots that have landed could end some of the professional fighters we've seen tonight. But these men are true professionals. Full leg kick. kick. Oh, exchange of strikes. Right Felipe Efrien forward. with a pitch strike. Flying knee from Efrien. Rock him, sock him, robots. Oh, he down. dropped him. Oh, Rocket has dropped him. Efrain Beautiful. Is down. Harbor Fresher. It's all over. over. Unbelievable finish from the Juggernaut! A knockout! Clips him with a huge strike, follows up with insurmountable grounds and pound. Unbelievable finish from the Team Lakai product. Absolutely unbelievable! And Phil, when you stand and trade like that, anything can happen. That's the bravest thing you'll see in the cage. Either of them could be dropped. They're hugging and laughing together now like the brothers they are. What an incredible fight. Both men incredibly brave in the most fitting organization. Brave by name, brave by nature. An organization by fighters, for fighters. Brave Nation, you are welcome. And here comes the replay. You can see them, you can see them both exchanging. Shots are landing on both sides. Efrain moving in, but he gets caught. What does he do? He moves in with a flying knee. Still pressing, but when you press forward, you've got a greater chance of landing hard shots and a greater chance of being knocked out. That's what you saw. He's down on the ground. Jeremy Pacatu pressing the fight, raining down the hammer fist and the referee, Decky Larkin wisely steps in and brings the fight to a close. What an 